And we're joined now by Maury Thompson, who wrote, produced, and directed this documentary. Welcome. Thank you. Appreciate you being here. Many of our viewers will recognize you, and certainly your name. They've seen your byline and read your articles for many years. You reported on politics and local government and business for more than 20 years with the Post-Star newspaper in Glens Falls. You retired in 2017. You continue to write articles uh, on the region's history for both the Post-Star and the Lake George Mirror. And you picked up a book on New York politics at a Crandall Public Library book sale a few years ago and read about this former governor, presidential candidate, and U.S. Supreme Court Justice who was born in Glens Falls, Charles Evans Hughes, a prominent politician and statesman, uh, later Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. Yet I think if you ask 10 people, who is Charles Evans Hughes? You will probably get looks from people saying, I, I don't know. Why do you think that is? Well, I think there's probably a lot of former governors and non-victorious presidential candidates <laughs> uh, who people wouldn't, wouldn't know off the top of their heads. With Hughes in particular, his story uh, maybe never caught the, the wavelength uh, like a Teddy Roosevelt or an FDR. So that's kind of why I've devoted uh, many hours of my life to telling his story through articles, blog posts, uh, a book, uh, and now a documentary, and who knows what else uh, for as long as I live on the earth. <laughs> when you read about him in that book that you had picked up, had you heard of him? I had heard of him, and I knew that I knew about his house on Center Street in Glens Falls. I didn't know much about him. What caught my attention was the depth of the many things that he had done. Yeah. I mean, you read off that list, and you add that, that he was the first president of the Baptist Church, uh, that he helped found a national organization for uh, understanding between Jewish people and Christians, and um, that he uh, raised the money for uh, Admiral Byrd's flight, uh, and many other things that, that he did. Any one of those would make a, a great achievement, and he had dozens of achievements. Yeah. To be New York governor, to run for president in, in 1916, he did lose to uh, Woodrow Wilson in a close race. Yeah, barely lost. Barely lost. Uh, I like to say that uh, a couple of 4,000 votes in California and we'd have a presidential library in Glens Falls. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I, I sort of jokingly say we need to build the almost presidential library. <laughs> <laughs> what was it that got him into politics? The, he was a lawyer in New York City, and the state hired him, uh, first of all, to do an investigation of the utility industries, and then an investigation of uh, the life insurance industries. And the life insurance industry, uh, he revealed a lot of uh, corruption in that industry, and many reforms then were made as a result, and that catapulted him into politics. I say catapulted him because it wasn't necessarily his decision. There was a de Democratic candidate you may have heard of, William Randolph Hearst, the newspaper publisher, mm -hmm. and uh, Teddy Roosevelt felt that Hughes had the, the, the name recognition and the popularity from the life insurance industry that he was the one that could carry the ticket. And he won. Yeah, that was another close race, but he, he defeated William Randolph Hearst, the newspaper mogul. And, and uh, in his two terms as governor, what was going on in New York at the time? Labor rights. Uh, he, had a, uh, he had a strong record on, on labor legislation. Also, the shutting down of the racetracks. Uh, a very close decision, something that he championed, went statewide. Uh, of course, as the son of a Baptist minister, uh, he was opposed to gambling. The state constitution at the time uh, prohibited race tax gambling, uh, and, but there were ways around that, and Hughes got legislation passed that, you might say, closed that, that loophole, and many of the racetracks, many of the racetracks 
uh, the racetracks in New York State shut down for a time because of that. Of course, that made Hughes very unpopular in Saratoga Springs, uh, as well as uh, some other places, um, but made him very popular uh, nationally as, as a reformer. The, the third area would be uh, in protecting the Adirondacks, mm -hmm. uh, the, the waterways, and land conservation. He brought together a coalition uh, to purchase uh, state land, and he also implemented uh, a major re reforestation uh, program. In the documentary, it talks about, uh, I, I think it was 115,000 acres preserved by the state under, under his watch. He saw clear cutting. He saw the effects of clear cutting, the impact it had, and, and he despised that. And, and that was part of the reason that he, he helped do what he could to, to end clear cutting in the Adirondacks. He had a, a, he had a good overall view uh, of the importance of, of stewardship when he would return to Lake George to make speeches. He often talked about the importance of, of keeping the lake beautiful. And one of his speeches, he talked about the Lake George Basin needed to be dedicated to not allowing uh, billboards in the area to cheapen the views. So in some ways, he, he's, he was a conservationist, you mentioned that, and, and in some ways, almost an environmentalist. But then there were also other issues he opposed the Forever Wild Clause in the Constitution. Yes, I wouldn't say that he opposed the, the goals of the Forever Wild Clause, but he felt that by, by removing it uh, from the Constitution, that the state could eventually have a self-sustaining uh, land conservation program. It was something in the talking stages uh, he never gained support for enough support for it in the legislature, so it wasn't something that he, that he, uh, it wasn't one of those issues that he tried to bulldoze through. So he wanted the forest lands to stay in production and keep being used to, to produce timber and, and to generate money for the economy. Yes, he felt that, uh, he felt that that was the most practical way. He felt that New York in time would have an enlightened view uh, of sustainability. What seems to be the consensus on, on what kind of a governor he was? Generally regarded as a very, uh, a very uh, strong governor. He was regarded as a hero just about every place in the nation except in New York where they, they were very angry over the racetrack issue and Taft became the leading candidate and he campaigned uh, across the country for Taft. And then in um, 1909, Taft came to Fort Ticonderoga and the many political pundits say that that was where the, uh, the die was cast uh, for, for Hughes to go on the court. Which he did uh, the year later. He was yes. appointed by Taft to, yes. the, to the U.S. Supreme Court as an associate justice. So he stayed on the court for six years until 1916, and that's that's when he was the Republican nominee for yes. president. And um, the issues in that the issues in that uh, 1916 campaign will sound very familiar to today: international security, global trade, and the border with Mexico. Of course, suffrage was a, was a big issue in that election. After the election, and this is what speaks to today, this is probably the most compelling facet of Hughes to me, is his devotion to political civility and something that, 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 that speaks so soundly to, in today's society. He, he narrowly lost the election to Woodrow Wilson, but after the U.S. Entered World War One, he made speeches saying, "We've got to get behind. We've got to rally behind President Wilson." That says a lot about his character. You talked to his biographer in the documentary, and he sang the praises of yes. what of what kind of a man Charles Evans yeah. Hughes was. Uh, William Offrey, uh, who is nearing completion of his biography <laughs> of, of Hughes, he's a uh, retired uh, congressional aide. Mm -hmm. uh, 
and uh, that's his retirement project that he's been working on for a couple years. When you talk with him in the documentary, he says that he believes Hughes is viewed upon as one of the greatest chief justices of the U.S. Supreme Court of all time. Many regard him as that. You talked with the Supreme Court Justice from, uh, from Warren County, and he said much the same, that here was a guy with a vision years before many other people, especially when it came to race and civil rights. Yes, both in legal cases and in, in life in general. He was very much uh, dedicated to uh, peace and tolerance. Were, were many of his views when it comes to civil rights and race influenced by his father, by the Baptist minister, and, it, and who was an abolitionist? His father was an abolitionist preacher. Uh, he called slavery organized sin. And, um, and that obviously very much influenced Hughes, Hughes views. He spent a lot of time here in the Adirondacks uh, in the summer. We, we hear in the documentary how the summer uh, governor's mansion was at Saranac Inn. Saranac Inn, Lake George, and Lake Placid. He spent uh, a number of his summers, quite a few summers. And um, it was a place that reminded him of his childhood. He, through the years, talked about his love of Glens Falls being his hometown. When he came to Glens Falls uh, to make a speech when he was campaigning for governor in 1906, he made a speech at the Empire Theater on South Street, which at the time was uh, quite the place. Um, the building is still there, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an office and apartment complex now. Mm. Uh, but, but he opened the speech saying, it's so good to breathe my native air again. Um, and, and uh, thus we know where the, that's title, where the title comes from, the documentary. From the documentary. Comes from. So he cherished uh, growing up here and, and being a native son of Glens Falls. Yes, and when he ran, when he ran for president, it probably, uh, you know, these days, these days, you would, you would put a dollar amount on the value of uh, that uh, indirect advertising. You know, every newspaper in the land ran his biography. Born in Glens Falls, yeah. you you couldn't buy that kind of publicity for Glens Falls. So uh, they've always been very, very, very proud of him. His homestead is still there, where he was born. Yes. So in the documentary, you interview the gentleman who lives in his house now, yes. where he grew up. Yes. Who knew nothing about him until the day they moved in and they saw this plaque out on the front yes. porch. And uh, he was quite impressed. He, yes. he looked at that. He said, that's, that's quite a resume there. When you read about Hughes in the book, did you immediately say, you know what? This, this sounds like a great documentary. No. Or did it, did it, it take it, a while? It, it, it took a while. Um, uh, I wrote some more columns and articles about Hughes and wrote some more columns and articles and. Uh, then when I started uh, a political blog on uh, on Postar.com, when that all came into fashion, mm -hmm. I wrote uh, I wrote a number of posts about Hughes. And uh, about that time, I started having the idea. Someone had said this would make a really great documentary, and uh, I needed the right uh, the right people with 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 film skills to do mm -hmm. it. And then. Uh, Shortly after I retired from the Post Star, I met uh, Caitlin Stedman mm -hmm. from Snarky Artbrook Films, and uh, we talked about the idea, and then I checked out some of her work, other work, and then uh, one day we decided to do it, and... Uh, so she's uh, a filmmaker right in Queensbury. She's in Queensbury, yes. What evolved was a project that is not only a history project, uh, but a tourism project, because it shows his connections with the various, you know, historical and cultural s sites of our region. You know, and our goal is that as this documentary makes its way outside of the immediate region, that people who are huge enthusiasts will say, "Ah, we want to, we want to go to the Adirondacks and, and visit these places and uh, uh, take a little pilgrimage." So, two years in the making, you originally had hoped to have in-person screenings, to have premieres at the Charles R. Wood Theater. That was our original goal. Uh, we wanted to, we wanted to, 
uh, use our premiere to, to give back to the Charles R. Wood Theater and the, the, Arch, the Arch District of Woods Falls. So we had this idea of a big premiere and all the ticket sales would, would go to those two projects. Well, the same called COVID-19 came along. What do we do? Yeah. And the Adirondack Theater Festival had been doing um, online um, virtual screenings during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so they let us uh, use their technology to do a virtual premiere that uh, and all the proceeds went to those two organizations and obviously you've brought it to mountain lake public television yes. and, and the hope is that many people will will see it and learn all about uh, charles eppins hughes maury thompson thank you very much for taking thank the you. time to be with us thank you